Hey, great to see you on the holiday weekend. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of Thanksgiving. Now, what I like to do on this show is just share my due diligence with you for hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm referring to stocks that are under five bucks that you can find on any market. And when I say hot OTC and penny stocks, I'm referring to stocks that have potential to make us money. Now, most of the hot stocks I find, I find when I'm looking at the charts, it's very quick and easy to look at a chart and see if there's heat. You can see if volume's coming in or if she's ready for a breakout. Well, when I find a chart that has heat, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that hot catalyst. When I get a hot catalyst to match my hot chart, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to trade and the sort of stocks I like to share with you. And I've got a few of those for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Toys R Us. Anybody out there not know who I'm referring to? Huge toy company, right? They've been around forever. This is ticker T-O-Y-R-F. Well, they were around forever until 2018 when they went bankrupt and then just disappeared. You don't see them anywhere except Australia. That's where they survived. Now, to be honest, I normally wouldn't be interested in Toys R Us in Australia. So why am I looking at them? Well, the company's been bought and sold a couple times since 2018. And their most current owners, Whipple Global, is doing just that. They are taking Toys R Us Global again. Thank you very much. They are back here in the United States. They are now in the United Kingdom. And there are many sites online. And being that it is Christmas, this is the best time of season to be considering the company. They tell us that the last two months of the year is when they get the lion's share of their revenues, which makes total sense to me. So in a nutshell, that's why we're looking at Toys R Us. She's got a lot going on. The only problem is her chart. It sucks. There's just no other way to put it. She has been flat or worse for the last two months. We're at roughly a penny here. Two months ago, we had a rip. She jumped from a penny up to four cents. That's 400% gains. And a year ago in September, she was at 30 cents. So the stock can move. And right now, we've got lots of reasons for it to move. She finished the day at a great buy price, as I said, just over a penny. Now, think about that. You buy at a penny. As soon as it hits two cents, what have you done? You've doubled your money. You've got 100% gains by moving one penny. Hits three cents, you've tripled your money. Why buy in at a nickel and wait to double your money at a dime? Triple your money at 15 cents? Get in at a penny. If you believe the company is going to grow, this is one of the best profitable prices you can buy at, a penny. She was up almost 8% today. She's on the pink tier. She's current, but she has no verified information. Those green ticks we're always talking about. Where's the verified profile? Where's the verified transfer agent? We would like to see these here. I don't know why they're not here. I am a little bothered by it, but I'm going to continue looking at this stock anyways. So Toys R Us, what was her relative volume today? Oh, we took a drop over 50%, dropping from roughly 4.2 million shares down to just under 2 million shares. Share structure for the company. They don't give us any information here, and I don't know why. I did find some information just doing a Google search, though not a lot of it. I only found one place that gave me any information. It came from Yahoo. Yahoo says that their outstanding share count is just under a billion, 982 million, and their float is roughly 382 million. That's a pretty high float. But if you've done the math there, you see that the insiders own the lion's share of this stock, about two-thirds of them, just about 600,000, 600 million shares. Taking a look at the financials, it's the same thing over here. We don't get any information, not on the annual, not on the quarterly. So let's jump on over to Yahoo. So looking back over the last few years, during COVID, she was dropping she went from 24 million down to 21 million. We know it's millions because they tell us here that we've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers on these charts as well. Coming out of COVID, they threw on $16 million under their 
financials in 2022, and then we've dropped about $6 million at the end of their fiscal year, July of 2023. They were at $32 million, and they did bring home profits of about $5 million. They don't give us any quarterlies over here, so that's all the financial information we get. Looking at the disclosures, we don't get any information there. Looking at the news, we don't get any information there. But I did do some diving around and I found two articles I want to share with you. This one here, this came out September 29th. Toys R Us to open stores across the United States, including at airports and cruise ships. Now, I'm going to be a little unorthodox here, and I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up because that's the chronological order of the news, the way they wrote it. In 2021, Whip Global acquired Toys R Us from True Kids, Inc., which bought the failed brand in 2018 liquidation sale. The True Kids had big plans to open up about a dozen standalone stores across U.S. malls, but only opened up two one in New Jersey and one in Texas, and both closed during COVID. The chairman and the CEO of Whip Global said that since the company acquired Toys R Us, it has increased the global retail footprint by more than 50% with over 1,400 stores now, and they are in 31 different countries. Some serious expansion going on here. Now, what are they doing here in the United States? Well, it was in 2021, the company made a deal with Macy's. They did a partnership to put stores inside stores. So Toys R Us is building a mini store inside the Macy's store. This is going to save them a lot of money. And they have already got over 450 Macy's stores they have done this with. Then they tell us up here that Whip Global, the toy store parent, has now announced an expansion of up to 24 flagship stores, as well as opening stores at airports and cruise ships. Aptly named the Air, Land, and Sea expansion, it is a bold move for the troubled toy company. The first airport store will be open in November at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport through a partnership with Duty Free Americas. The stores for the cruise industry will sell cruise-themed merchandise through the Toys R Us, though they did not specify which cruise lines they're going to be selling on. The flagship stores will open in a new deal with Go Retail Groups, which will start opening in 2024 holiday season. That's right now, believe it or not. <laughs> the 24 flagship locations will join the 452 Toys R Us shops that are currently open inside Macy's stores across the country. Now, they did this same sort of deal with another store, W.H. Smith. This is a huge store brand in the United Kingdom and over in Europe. They tell us that Whip Global, owner of Toys R Us, announced today a new retail partnership between W.H. Smith and Toys R Us for the launch of nine W.H. Smith high street stores, which will be unveiling new Toys R Us shops in their stores this month to bring the beloved children's store brand back to the UK high street. The new retail partnership follows last year's successful launch of Toys R Us UK's digital flagship e-commerce website. The brand, which is now owned by Whip Global, generates more than $2 billion in global retail sales annually through its 1,350 stores, they say it's over 1,400 now, and e-commerce businesses in 31 countries. It was 30. So the, the company is growing. They're putting stores inside of stores, which is really going to keep their expenses down. If you get to live with someone else and don't have to pay that full-fledged rent, you're saving yourself a lot of money. You don't have to pay the full-fledged electric bill. You don't have to have your own storefront, your own signs. This is going to save them a lot of money and help them make money. And right now is Christmas, folks. They are in 31 countries doing, well, up to this point, $2 billion in annual revenue. This could be the year that this company breaks out. And the chart is, well, it needs a breakout. Let's put it that way. Let's go take a look at that chart. It's not a very pretty chart initially, but we are expecting a ho, ho, ho Santa run on Toys R Us, right?
This is ticker T-O-Y-R-F. This is a six month, four hour view. We've got a low bubble here of 001, September 28th. Five days later, October 2nd, she hit 20 cents. Do the math, folks. From 001 to 20 cents is 20,000% gains in five days. For every $100 bill you bought down here, if you got lucky and sold at the top, you made $20,000 for every $100 bill. <laughs> Mind-blowing, isn't it? She came back down real fast right to where she was at, stayed underneath that 200, had another rip here. This was on November 14th. She went from a penny up to 10 cents. That's a thousand percent gains. That means for every hundred dollar bill, you made a thousand dollars up here. She came back down and right now she is trying to break out. Though you really can't see it very well here. She is pushing through the 200. It is an atypical breakout chart. It's just a lot flatter. Our oscillators are actually growing. Over the last few weeks, our PPO has been pushing up. It's on top of her line, climbing slowly. Same thing with our MACD. She crossed the signal line. She is on top of her other line, pushing up. And our RSI has been bouncing off to 48, jumping up to 53. Everything is slowly pushing up. 20 day, one hour view. All right, let me zoom in here so you can see what's going on. We'll get real close. There you go. So she is now on top of her 200. She is bouncing off of it many a times. And then what do we get here? Boom. This to me looks like a pillar. This looks like a pillar. What I mean by that, she's right up here with everything else, gets this long wick, breaks through a strong SMA, the 200, pushes a wick way down deep, and then comes right back to where she started from. This is like a pillar on a bridge. It went through this stone hedge here, down into the ground, comes back up, and it's firm and solid. So now it can start building up and starting to climb. I see this a lot. This could be a token sign of a breakout. Our oscillators, they're still in good shape, still climbing ever so slowly. PPO has got a crossover right now and is pushing up. And our RSI is still cool down there at 52. Looking at our five day, five minute. There's really nothing different between the four hour, the one hour, the five minute. We are just going sideways. We are on top of the uh, 200 day SMA here. We're going under it, over it, under it, over it. Had a bounce here uh, yesterday. Whoa, boy, high and low. Look at that. We got a low bubble here of 0091, high bubble of 1.3 cents, all in one spike. She came through the day and there is our big drop coming back up. Oscillators, they're everywhere right now, folks. They're up and down, up and down, as you can see. The charts aren't giving us a lot of hint, but I think we saw one. That last pillar on the one hour chart looks to me like it could be a token sign of a breakout. This is Toys R Us. This is their time of season. They're gonna be doing a lot of business. They're now in 31 countries. They are in two different stores. You've got them in WH Smith in the UK and the EU. You've got them in the United States with Macy's. 1,400 stores. I think they're going to be doing well, folks. It wouldn't hurt for you to watch this company. She's at a great buy price. Ticker T-O-Y-R-F. Come on, folks. Tis the season. Ooh, you've got a good eye for detail. Yes, we did just cover this stock a few days ago. Specifically, November 20th. This is Dish Network, ticker D-I-S-H. Now, because I did just cover the stock a few days ago, I'm not going to go over everything all over again. You can jump into the video for that. Because the same reasons apply. So why are we looking at it again today? Because of the chart. That one-hour chart is set up to break out right now. And she's got a hot reason. Her merger deal. Now, in case you didn't know, Dish Network is one of the largest internet service providers in the country, reaching critical mass right now of over 70%. Critical mass, that's like when the iPhone hit it. Once it hit critical mass, everybody owned an iPhone. It was ubiquitous. It was everywhere. You couldn't go anywhere and not see an iPhone. Well, that's the way Dish is looking now. 
Well, they got a merger deal sitting on the table right now with EchoStar. Both companies are owned by the same billionaire. I believe his name is Charlie Ergen. The companies have had sad quarterly reports, both of them. You had Dish, which did about $3.1 billion last quarter, and they were down about 10%. Then you got EchoStar. They are newer. They did about $37 million last quarter, and they dropped about 35%. Well, the merger deal is supposed to help them in a lot of ways. Synergize their strengths. Minimize their expensive. Create a juggernaut of a company. They tell us over here that Dish Network and EchoStar are combining in an all-stock merger. The conjoined entity will combine Dish's streaming services of pay TV, 5G connectivity, wireless, with EchoStar's satellite communication solutions. The combined company aims to deliver a broad set of communication and content distribution capabilities, leveraging terrestrial and non-terrestrial wireless connectivity. Dish's 5G wireless network covers more than 70% of the U.S., and EchoStar recently launched its Jupiter 3 satellite, which has significantly available capacity for converged connectivity services. Jupiter 3 has now doubled their broadband capacity. And we are using S-Band here to connect our internet well, they're using the same band around the world. So the company is going to use that to expand globally. The combined company will be headquartered in Englewood and will go to market globally under a suite of consumer and business brands, including Dish Wireless, Dish TV, as well as EchoStar's Hughes and Jupiter satellite services. The transaction is expected to close by the end of 2023. Now, this really puts the companies in a great position. They're not going to be duplicating expenses now. So they're going to be bringing down their expenses, giving them free capital to work with. Now, each company has roughly $2 billion to use to build on their business. That's $4 billion together since they've merged together. They're going to have a synergy of all that they do, pay TV, 5G, wireless, satellite connectivity, not just in the United States, but they're going globally. They're going to cut down their expenditures, and they've got $4 billion to work with. It all looks super hot to me, folks. I think this company in the next five or 10 years is going to be huge. I think they're going to be gigantic. I think it's great for a short play right now for a run. I think it's excellent for a long hold. Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's take a look at this chart for DISH. This is Dish Network's six-month, four-hour view. You should be vaguely familiar with this. It hasn't changed very much in five days. Not the six-month view. So six months ago, back in March, we had a high of $11.77, and it was here at the beginning of November, just after she reported her financials, that she hit that low of $3.21. Now, before the financials came out, there was a lot of anticipated excitement here. She was climbing, pushing towards that 200, looked like she was going to break out, had the financials come out a different way, but they came out with a 10% loss year over year. So we would have anticipated the price was going to drop about 10%, right? Not even close. <laughs> We're up here at $5.50 roughly. That should have brought it down to about 5 bucks. No, she went four times further, over $2, falling down to $3.21. She bounced off of that low, hitting her head here and going sideways pretty much. And would you believe it, right now she is setting up for a breakout. You just can't see it on the four hour chart. Let me show you what it looks like on the 20 day one hour. How about that? Looking better? Psst, yes, hot, hot, hot. This is looking good. So we have got a drop of $2 here from 556 down to 321, a bounce back. She has created herself a new resistance here. She hit this spot and has been hitting it over and over and over again, and she just can't seem to get through it. Though she's already gotten through the 200-day SMA, she has not gotten through that resistance, which is holding her down. Now, we're going to focus in on all of this in just a minute, but let's focus in on this big drop over here. I'm going to grab my Fibonacci, and I'm going to poke the top and the bottom of this drop. 
This is going to give me algorithmic supports and resistances that I can use to trade on. Normally, we get these lines by using historical price points. We're not doing that this time, and you don't need to. Believe me, you can trade on these. So she has fallen down to this low. She has bounced back up. She is falling down to the floor again, and right there is the first time she has tagged the Fibonacci's uh, resistance. She has hit that twice, and then she's fallen up underneath our resistance. Now, on a Fibonacci, right here is the 50% mark. You can see right there, 50%, so that's the halfway point. It's a perfect average. Half of anything is a perfect average. And the algorithms on these charts, that's all they're using is averages. So this is a perfect place. Anything below that is in the negative zone. If it falls underneath the 50%, chances are it's going to continue falling. If it can push itself up over the 50, chances are it's going to continue to climb. So there is an instinct now for this to try to reach that 50% mark, which is up here at $4.42. But right now, we've got a battle with her new resistance, the one she just started. She is underneath that, but she is on top of the 200, on top of the 50, on top of the 20, and she's not climbing. What's more, our 50-day and our 20-day SMA have already crossed that 200-day SMA. Already done it. Those are golden crosses. That is like a punch. That should have given the price power to move up, but it didn't. It's locked. It's snagged. Something's holding it back. It's in the twilight zone. I'll tell you what this is. It's the calm before the storm. And how do I know that? Well, let's look at the oscillators here, folks. So here's our price, right? It is an atypical breakout chart. You can see that. That is an atypical. She is trying to break out right now. She just isn't getting there. Well, looking at our oscillators, our PPO, percentage price oscillator, this pattern of climbing up and kind of going level up here is all good. Looks a lot like our price, right? Climbing and kind of going level right there. Well, that's the way they should look. Similar. So, so should the MACD. Look at our MACD, folks. Does that look anything like our PPO or our price? No, it doesn't. She is falling, falling down to the signal line. This is called a divergence. Now, I can't tell you why divergences happen, but I can tell you how they repair themselves. When this gets popped back into joint and gets back where she belongs, there will be a reversal on the chart. That's what happens when a divergence fixes itself. My question, what's it going to reverse to? It's flat. What is the reverse of flat? Is it down or up? I don't know here. Normally, I would get my indicators from my oscillators, but they're all going dormant and flat right now, so I'm not getting a lot there. And I see our volume is decreasing day after day right now. So it looks precarious, but it also looks like it has a lot of potential. Coming down to our five-day, five-minute. So this chart is looking good. We got a low in this corner, and it's higher in that corner. We were at 326 underneath the 200, fought the 200. Once we got over it, you see excitement, right? You see a burst of energy. You got the monkey off my back. I can start to climb. She jumped here from about $3.35 up to $3.55. Then worked her way over to the 50-day SMA and walked up to that high. Once she hit this high, things got wonky. I don't know what's going on here. She fell down to the 50 with a big drop underneath, then a big pop on top, then a medium-sized drop, then a medium-sized bounce, then small and small. Everything, all the SMAs, all the price bars are all coming down and getting locked together in this tightly bound rope. They're getting knotted together right there, and they're snagged up. They're not moving. Twilight zone, calm before the storm. I don't know what it is. I think it's all about that divergence. I think once that lets go, once the snag is released, this thing is going to take off and run. Looking at our oscillators here, I am getting no indications. Look, they were all over the place, but really they're just going sideways. So it is all a presumption, but on good, solid evidence. We got a merger between two big companies. Each has billions of dollars of money to use. They have got big footprints covering the United States and going global. 
Folks, I think this is a great play for the next week. I think we're going to see a run out of this when that divergence pops back into place. I think she's going to crack and run hard. And I think she is definitely worth a 5 to 10 year hold. Oh boy, honestly, I could see this stock going over $100. Like Netflix, starting off at 3 bucks and ending up way the heck where it's at. I think this could be that. I do, but do your own due diligence. I think you'll see the same. Remember, folks, if you do invest in this for a long hold, don't forget me. Send me a thank you card. Now, here's a company I've been waiting to talk to you about. This is Branded Legacy, ticker BLEG. She's hot, folks. Get your eyeballs on this company right now. Bleg has been getting a lot of buzz online. A lot of people are watching this company, and for good reason. She has got so many things she's involved with right now. Lots of deals, eliminating shares. She hasn't just had news over the last few months. She's had good news all year long. And the stock's chart is just now starting to move. It's looking good. She's gone from 001 to 003. That's a 200% gain right there, but that is nothing for what I think is about to happen. I think we're in the foothills of the mountain right now, folks. So Branded Legacy, she finished the day at 00285 with over 100% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Transfer agent verified and a verified profile. That's validated information. Hoorah, we've got them for this company. They also have independent directors listed. Now, the only reason I know you list them here is when you actually have serious plans of uplisting. Every company says they're going to uplist. But who's serious about it? The ones that go out and get independent directors, you've got to have independent directors to uplist, and then they list them over here. Now, I haven't actually read it, but it's probably in one of their filings. Good luck finding it. So what does this company do? Well, I'm sure their description is going to change here. They've gotten rid of some of their subsidiaries that work with CBDs and hemp, but they're still working with CBDs and hemp. They're working with mushrooms. No, 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 not those magic mushrooms that make you see all kinds of pretty colors. Just your everyday average mushrooms that are healthy for you. And they're creating nutraceutical products and actual medications as well. And they're trying to help consumers. So this is the description they give us as of right now. Branded Legacy is a holdings company focused on vertically integrated biotechnology operations. Vertically integrated means whatever it is they're doing, they take care of it from beginning to end. If they were a farmer, they would plant the seed, harvest the crop, process that crop, package it, ship it, and then sell it. Whatever it is they're doing, they do everything from start to finish. We engage in every aspect of the process of providing plant-based pharmaceuticals to retail outlets and consumers with a focus on traditional ecological knowledge. We combine medicinal ethnobotany with the cutting edge of pharmaceutical biotechnology as well as marketing, co-packing, and sustainability services. So what was the relative volume of the company on Friday? Boom! Look at that. We've got like 350% increase, almost 400% increase with big numbers. She's normally doing just under 29 million shares a day for the last 30 days. And on Friday, she did virtually 100 million shares. Share structure. All right, we need to talk about this. It doesn't look great here, but it's a lot better than what it was. Currently, our outstanding share count is 1.3 billion. Insiders own almost a billion of those shares. That leaves us with about 400 million in the float, which is a high float, no doubt about it. I know that. But as you're gonna see in the news, they have been eliminating shares, wiping them out. I don't just mean a few. First, they took away 600 million. Then they turned around and took another billion. That's 1.6 billion shares that were here but aren't here now. So you'd be looking at 1.6, 1.3. You're looking at almost 3 billion shares right there, right? And they say that they're planning on taking another 400 million shares away. 
So this is a lot better than what it was. It's not great, but I see that the company is working to give a shareholder value and that has a lot of value in my eyes. Market cap is real low right now, even though they have a ton of shares. We're only down here at 3.8 million. Taking a look at the financials. All right, I'm not quite sure about the financials. You know, if they were all theirs, when they were making them, how they were making them. They're kind of all over the place here. We were at 318,000 back before COVID. Through COVID, it dropped to 100,000, then 64,000. And at the end of 2022, we were back up to $215,000, and they got to keep $142,000. Looking at the quarterlies, all right, well, they're all over the place. We've got a 7,000 and 80,000, totally missed one here at the end of the year. First one for 2023 was 88,000. And the last one for June was uh, 13,000. And I'm gonna presume there is another one, which I haven't dove into, but I don't think it's all that great. But what we can take a look at is that balance sheet, which does give us a lot of information. Cash and cash equivalents. What do you got in the bank? Nothing, <laughs> zero. Now remember, we got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. So that's, well, that's still zero. <laughs> Total assets, 317,000. Total liabilities, a lot more. It's like a startup company. It costs you a lot to get things going. Almost $2 million, which means we have a deficit of stockholder equity of about $1.6 million. For an investment, I'm not crazy about this at this point in the game, but looking at it for a short-term run on the charts, this isn't bothering me at all. Taking a look at the disclosures, we don't have anything here since 2004, and all of their financials are here and current. Do they have one here, special supplemental? Yes, the most recent quarterly report is here. It was just filed. It would be worth diving into this. I'm not gonna dive into it right now because we've got so much news, which really is all the catalyst. Whatever these are, I don't think they're gonna bother the price at all. So let's go take a look at that news now. Now we have got a lot of news here, folks. Top and bottom, they skipped places. And I'm not gonna go through all of this news. We're not gonna dive into all of it. We're gonna dive into one piece of news first, and then we're gonna headline the rest. Branded Legacy unveils strategic transformation in investor teleconference. This came out August 23rd. They tell us here that the company announced today of their restructuring efforts which involves spinning off the subsidiaries of Spikes, CBDX, and Elevate Hemp, as well as releasing Delta Growers and Versatile Industries, carrying only the assets aligned with the company's mission as emphasized. Now, both Spikes, CBDX, and Elevate Hemp are working with CBDs. They work with a lot of different products, so they've got this Apple Rush drink, hard and soft, yeah, alcoholic versions. They've got a lot of these different companies that deal with CBDs. Well, I see them still dealing with CBDs, so I'm not quite sure what the need was for the spinoffs. They go on to tell us that the company has unveiled a six month plan to secure its desired market share and create value for stakeholders. The company is in the process of acquiring subsidiaries, including Rocket Web Development and Design and Myco, that's the mushroom company, Myco Enlighten. And this is just a couple. They've got a lot more companies that they've done deals with already. They are also planning on changing their name from Branded Legacy to Royal Biotech, and they're gonna get a new ticker, R-T-E-K. Mr. Oswald stressed the company's commitment to long-term growth through targeted acquisitions, diversification of product offerings, and sustainability initiatives. Royal Biotech aims to research stable alkaloids, improve delivery systems, and conduct clinical trials to gain FDA approval for its pharmaceutical products. The company also plans to explore genetic consulting for industrial crop varieties to produce alkaloids and other materials simultaneously. 
And this company right here, Rocket Web Development Design, that is exactly what it sounds like. They're getting into the business of creating and designing websites. So they are diversifying as well. Now jumping back to that news, some of this is in order, some of it isn't because they've got it jumping up and down. But let's just headline this and let you see how much they are involved with. The company signs a letter of intent to acquire Mycology Research Lab. Also on that same day, the company inks letter of intent to acquire digital marketing firm. On that same day, yes, August 23rd, the company successfully completes acquisition of Rocket Web Development and Design. In September, Branded Legacy and Novus partner develop plant-based meds for health plans. Also in September, the company invests heavily in innovation and growth with a five hundred hundred and forty thousand dollar expansion i wish i had more details for you folks but there's just so much here then in october the company expands their facility to eleven thousand square feet and extends a letter of intent for the acquisition of the alchemist llc coming down here they tell us that branded legacy completed the acquisition of the alchem cannabis signifying business expansion I told you the company had reti retired 6 million shares up here. They then retired 1 billion more shares. Down there, they tell you they want to do an entire 2 billion, which leaves another 400 million shares. Then in November, the company secures a 1 million line of credit, $1 million, that is, and affirms no reverse stock split. This is getting better and better. So they're not going to do a reverse stock split. They're going to take away another 400 million shares. They are getting a $1 million line of credit. They have just made a whole bunch of deals, expanded a facility. And then on top of that, we had a piece of news come out on the 16th. The company signs letter of intent to acquire $6 million in assets and additional facility space. And I did want to take a look at this one. They tell us here that the company signed a letter of acquisition with a Florida-based company yet to be named, which is subject to a detailed 40-day due diligence process, which means you've got to wait 40 days from November 16th before they close this deal. This will potentially add approximately $6 million in assets to their portfolio for refinement, co-packing, and more. Elements of this acquisition include a large-scale CO2-based extraction unit, a multifaceted refinement lab, a C1D1 certified synthesis unit, and two fully automated gummy manufacturing units. Gummies are big sellers, folks, huge sellers, and they're not making them with horse hoofs anymore. <laughs> Additionally, the facility is fully inspected, permitted, and ready for operation immediately. So folks, we've got lots of things that they are doing here. They've got lots of different products that they want to bring to market. I don't know what all of them are. I've just shown you all the news. I've given you good reason to do due diligence. Now I'm going to show you the chart. When you see how the chart looks, you're going to want to do your due diligence. Just come on over here to the otcmarket.com website and jump into this news, folks. It'll make good read. So let's go take a look at that chart now. We're looking at BLEG, ticker B-L-E-G, and that is a hot looking chart. That is sweet. You know, if I was given a choice between a hot looking date and a hot chart, I'm going to pick the hot chart. Hands down every time. I trust it more. Nothing personal, beautiful women. <laughs> So we are looking at Branded Legacy, ticker B-L-E-G. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Our high was six months ago in March. It was 0072, and we hit a low at the end of October of 0009. Now, what we've got here is a hot atypical breakout chart that's breaking out right now. Our 200-day SMA has been falling fast and furious for a long time with the price deep underneath it. Down here, we are looking at the 200, closing in on the price, the price closing in on the 200, and ultimately, the price crossing the 200 and breaking out. Well, we were expecting that to build up, 
but it just happened. As you can see, all this volume has come into the picture about 45 days ago, and she has just been bouncing off of our 200 haul here, not getting far. But today, yesterday, she's taken off. Thursday and Friday, she was down here at 001 and hit 003. That's 200% run. And then pulled back to 0028, which is right there. Well over the 200. She ripped from underneath all of these SMAs, took a bounce, shot through that 200, and did not come back down. This is looking very good. And look at our oscillators, folks. Our PPO is shooting up real fast and hard, just like our MACD. Look at the size of that green bar. And our RSI, Jiminy, that jumped from 54 up to 77, and it's still red hot and on fire. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Girl, that's looking beautiful. Our 200-day SMA, it was falling, and now it is totally flat. Perfect breakout. What happened? She is breaking out. She bounced off that low, got up on top of that 50. Off the 50, she bounced up to the 200. Fell back a little bit. Then she did a crouch before the pounce, just like a cat does. You got to go lower if you want to go higher. That's all that happened here. A crouch before the pounce, jumped up onto the 200, and then shot up to that point uh, double zero three, and then pulling back. We are still waiting for a red bar here, folks. This is all beautiful. Volume was very strong today. Our 200 is turning up right now. It is actually turning up. And look at our oscillators. You couldn't ask for better setups on your oscillators. Every single one of them are darn near going vertical straight to the moon. Taking a look at that five-day, five-minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect chart. You got your low bubble in this corner of 0015, high bubble in that corner, 100% up. She has been riding on her 50 day SMA. Actually, no, she bounced off her 50 day. She's been riding on her 20. She hit it here, she hit it here, she's hitting it right now. So this is beautiful. She doesn't need to get near the 200 or the 50. She's very light and buoyant. She's bouncing off of her 20-day SMA right now. She is still pushing up. She had a pullback off of her high bubble, hit that 20, and is bouncing up. Our, the, our 200 is beautiful. All of our SMAs are in gorgeous shape. Our oscillators, they were coming down. With this pullback, not a fall, this pullback off of the high bubble, right? You hit your head on the ceiling, what's the very first thing you do? You just pull back. You don't come all the way down the ladder. You just pull your head back and then readjust. That's all we're doing here. Oscillators are readjusting. They pulled down and now they're coming back up. Here, that was a serious down. I'll grant you that, but she's turning around. You can see it. Same with our RSI. Fell from 65 down to 51, back up to 59. Folks, there's lots of catalysts. There's lots of reasons stockholder value is going up. They're taking away shares, another 400 million, they say, and I believe them. They're making deal after deal after deal. You know this is going to help the financials. Heck, I'm not even going to talk about the financials. I'm not worried about them. They've got so many catalysts, and the biggest one is eliminating those shares. That shows sincerity from this company. That's what I like. Come on, folks. you got to put BLEG on your charts right now. Watch this tomorrow. Watch this all week. If it takes a big bounce, you may want to sell. Wait for it to come down to a strong SMA. Get back in because I don't think she's going to just go up and come down once. I think we could see some multiple bounces out of this. I'm not a psychic. I know I call myself a wizard, but this is just a feeling. You do your own due diligence. You make up your own mind. It's your money you're investing. Not just this stock. The other ones too, folks. Don't let me down here. I give you enough information to get you enticed, to get you interested, to show you the potential. I cannot tell you what to buy or sell. That's on you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.